start clapping louder, faster and make hooting noises. Superb. Thank you so much. So what I want you to do is I just want you to look at your neighbor either on your right or left and thank them. Say thank you for making my evening so special. Just look at your right or left and say thank you for making my evening so special. And if I can't portray this on an Excel sheet, the guy who needs to take a decision is not going to take a decision simply because, and again, psychology is at play here. People take decisions not to maximize, but they take a decision that will not get them fired. And that day I got a notification on my computer on the right hand side. It said that you have no new notification. So, so, so and I'm wondering where the hell is all this technology going to? And the architecture is the largest hard disk you can ever get. There is nothing larger than that. And all these computer science guys talk about big data and all that. That's all bull. Uh, I, that was the voice of God. Did you see where it come from? That's from Shivani. So, <laughs> so big round of applause. She's a real host. Uh, she, she. Thank you. Since I'm, uh, I'm not in Delhi, I can clearly say I'm not the host. I'm your MC. Anyone from Delhi? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Anyone from Pune? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any married men? No? <laughs> Women over 30? None. Okay. Okay. Students, we're talking about co creating the future of work. I think co creation, a lot of people misunderstand as you know, sitting in a conference room and deciding and brainstorming and okay this is co-creation but I think co-creation is never complete unless you actually include the end users as part of it and when you're talking about co-creating the future of work the end user really is the millennials the young people the jobs of today which are the capitalist jobs uh, they, fall, uh, they fall under the capitalist economy that those are going to continue and then there's going to be another branch which is so we still have some hope people like us yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going away that fast. Okay. Yeah, never. Texting is, at least for us, easier than calling because there's a lot of cues that you don't know how to deal with. And whether, it, I mean, previously I guess it was emails and now it's moved on to texting, it's faster. So it is basically up to me as a person or as a professional how to manage my personal life as well. Yeah. So I think the whole, whole word workplace needs to be kind of really broken down. Work is going on a certain trajectory and place or space as we call it is going on a separate trajectory. Digital. Even with millennials to an extent uh, there has been a certain pressure to look in a certain way because of uh, say uh, the bombardment of Instagram posts and I mean it makes me feel that like I was born you know 30 years too early I think. I think it's a little misguided. Yeah? In what way? <laughs> I mean the lines between work and personal life Somewhere they are getting blurred. You guys can relate to us. Stop working eight hours at one stretch. Break it up into four different uh, parts of two hours each. Because the moment it is structured, that's what is affecting us. So don't you think uh, we need to in fact talk more instead of texting? I'm just asking. Yeah, uh, texting is in, in no way, I'm not saying it should replace talking. But I mean, it's a facilitator for having difficult conversations. There seems to be some dreaming going on here. You see, I'm 76 years old. I'm very active in my studio. When I was your age, you could run a YouTube architectural practice. Workplaces, you have uh, people spanning decades. So how do you design a workplace keeping in mind only the millennials what they want? I think offices are beginning to be designed more like college campuses. Drum roll. Yeah, okay. Yeah, who said who? Who said who? You said who? Okay, Pune, make some noise. Woo! I said some noise. I give you a choice. Why who? Thank you. Thank you very much. Working. Do you think co-working is working? Not working. Working, not working. Working. Applause. This is, there's always this notion that co-working spaces are places where you have fun, where you kind of hang around. You may even find your boyfriend or girlfriend. But that may not be true. 
when you really look at the, the seriousness in which this co-working spaces work. Somehow this co-working space which started with a one million dollar kind of uh, investment today is like you know valued at 20 billion dollars. Are these co-working spaces kind of going to survive? That's About 15 years back I think Gautam had a terrible accident, car accident and uh, he had many broken bones and the doctor said that if he manages to walk we are happy. Today Gautam is not, he doesn't only really walk he actually had a steel rod put in his leg, but he is a marathoner. Uh, so the first real uh, dabble with virtual reality happened way back in 1962 by a guy named Martin uh, Helig, and he created what was called the Sensorama. So I particularly asked him that, uh, Uncle, do you think the computer is going to change the way the architects are working these days? And he uh, made a remark at that point in time saying that, well, a uh, good productivity tool, but the hand drawing ways are never going to go. I personally feel we are standing at that point of inflection in terms of immersive computing. I'm ready to give myself over to Gotham, become his chela, and learn to design with his software. Why don't you have a signature style and how do you keep repeating that magic over and over and over again? The answer is I have an extremely bad memory. <laughs> and, uh, Good evening everyone, it's a huge honor to be here. Can you tell me which of these workplaces is, or which of these areas is collaborative space and which is quiet space? We, we have this idea of how people collaborate that doesn't really translate with, uh, you know, how actually people behave. The average utilization of that space went up to 40-45% and the peak utilization was actually at 70%. We didn't have to tell people a thing. People instinctively pick these things up, you know. Um, if something is intuitive by use, people will go and use it. Good evening! So much better. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is imagine yourself in this space. It's because the stress induced in a game eventually leads to happiness. Dopamine is probably the biggest reason why a lot of married men are still on Shadia.com. Why don't these teams act in the same way when they are faced with a pressure situation at work or when they are faced with a tight deadline at work? It's because these teams are not used to working under pressure with each other. That there is a problem of the way we adopt technology and society is always bumped up from one point of inflection to another point of inflection. We call it driver less cars because we are so used to the driver car and the only thing we can now think of is the driver less car. I would think that maybe the answer is driver full cars rather than driver less cars because you could have some brain implants and then as it is everybody does backseat driving so you could actually have some uh, some uh, signals going from individuals uh, sitting in the car which actually guide the car to a much better situation by using all kinds of algorithms as architects we need to architect we need to architect that internet space where's the photograph can you take a selfie of us 